So you're brand new to Fallout 76 or you're a returning player to Fallout 76 and you want to know what is the best armor in this game. But what if I told you that all of the armor can be the best armor? Now you might be a little confused, but hold on just a second. So there is a legendary perk in this game called Overeaters, which gives you damage reduction if you are fully fed or fully hydrated. Now you might be wondering why I think Overeaters is the best and I'll tell you right now the reason is because damage reduction will do a lot more than damage resistance. So a lot of the armor in this game have certain damage resistance where the legendary perks will give you more. Vanguards will give you more damage resistance the more health you have. Bolster will give you more damage resistance the less health you have but Overeaters will give you damage reduction if you are fully fed or fully hydrated and damage reduction is a lot better than damage resistance so the best way to show you what overeaters can do is basically going into an enemy and letting it attack me over and over until i'm dead so the way i made this video is that in the clips you're watching right now i have no perk cards on and I'm just using a T51B power armor. This is just basic power armor. There's no mods on it whatsoever. It's just the basic armor. And you can see right now that the deck claw kills me in five hits. Now, I did this over 20 times to get the exact uh, number of hits that I can take. And each time it was around five hits. There was a few times where it was four hits because deck claws do power attacks where they can run into you where it does more damage but if they just do light attacks it's five hits and then i did the exact same test with the t51b power armor but this time it has over ears on it i am fully fed and i am fully hydrated and i just went in there's no perks on this build and there is also no mods on other than the jetpack have the jetpack on so i can get around easier but there's nothing special about this armor other than it has over ears on it. And you can see right now that it takes the deck claw around 8 hits to kill me. Once again, these are all light attacks. I did this several times just to get the deck claw to do light attacks. And you can see that it's only 8 hits to kill me. So before I move on, I just want to talk about a mod that you can get for power armor. The mod is called Emergency Protocols. Once you're below 20% health, you take 50% less damage. If you combine this mod with Overeaters, your character will become unkillable. And you can get this mod down at the Watoga Shopping Plaza. The vendor will sell it for each of the power armor sets in the game. And it's just a very nice mod to have. So now it's time to show you what the Overeaters power armor can do when I have my perks equipped. And you will be able to see right now that I'm able to take a lot of damage. Instead of fighting one deck claw, I'm fighting two deck claws. Instead of letting them just do light attacks, I'm letting them do the heavy attacks as well. And I'm able to take a lot of damage. So now I'm going to be going over the perks that I would recommend you use when you're using this power armor. It's just going to help you get a lot of damage reduction while also doing very decent damage. But I'll also be going over the perks that I would recommend for when you're not using the power armor because there is so many good ones and it will help you stay alive a lot longer. So the first perk card that we're going to be talking about is a blocker. Blocker is in strength and I do use the two star version of this card. The two star version will help you take 30% less melee damage. It's just very good to have and I do feel like the three star version of this card is a little bit of an overkill. So that's why I use the two star version. It's very powerful and if you combine this with the over ears armor, you're going to be able to take a lot of melee damage. So the next perk card that we're going to be using is rejuvenated this will increase the benefits from being fully fed and fully hydrated when you're fully fed you get more hp when you're fully hydrated you get better ap regen and this is just a very good card to have on with this build since you're always going to be fully fed and fully hydrated since you're using the overeaters armor so the next perk card that we're going to be talking about is fireproof you take less damage from explosions and flame attacks this is just very beneficial for when you're fighting enemies that throw grenades, so you take less damage from them grenades. But it's also very beneficial because if you're fighting certain enemies that do flame attacks, like let's say Earl Williams, which is one of the bosses in the game, 
He does this fire ability where he brings down fire from the ceiling. This card will save you. So I would recommend it. You don't need all three stars into it, but it is very nice to have on your character. So the next perk card I would recommend, and this is only if you are playing by yourself, is Lone Wanderer. When adventuring alone, you take less damage and you also get better AP regen. This perk card is for when you are not on a team. If you go onto a team and you have this perk card equipped, it will not work. This is just for when you are by yourself in a game and you don't want to do any of the daily ups or expeditions. But it's a very good card to have because it will help out with the damage reduction and it will give you more AP regen. So the next perk that I would recommend is Suppressor. When you attack the enemy, the enemy does less damage. Very nice perk to have and it's just always going to be activated because you're not going to just run around and not do any damage. When you see an enemy, you're going to attack, and if that enemy decides to attack you back, it's not going to be doing as much damage to you. Very nice to have, and I would recommend it for this build. So the next perk card, and if you know me and this channel, you saw it coming, it's Nord Rage. So the reason you want Nord Rage is just because when you go below 20% health, you gain damage resistance, you get more damage, and you also get a better AP regen. This is just very beneficial to have if you are a bloody build, or even if you are a full health build, it's just a nice safety measure to have on your character just in case you do go below the 20% health. But I can guarantee you, you will not even get down to 20% health because this over here's armor is just that powerful. But it's just nice to throw on even at level 1 just in case that does happen. So the next perk card that we're going to be using and probably the most beneficial perk card that we're using on this build is dodgy you avoid incoming damage at the cost of action points per hit now the reason that we're going to be using this is just because we do have an insane amount of ap regen we're using rejuvenate we're using lone wonder and also nerd rage but even if you're only using rejuvenated you will have so much ap regen that your ap will not run out and you will always be able to take less damage so it's just very nice to have and I would highly recommend you put this card on your build. So now I'm going to go over the perk cards that I would recommend if you're not using a power armor. So I would recommend all of the cards that I just mentioned before. But there is three more that I would recommend. The first card is Barbarian. Every point of strength adds damage resistance to your character. This card alone is going to make you feel like you're wearing a power armor. It's very powerful. And if you have a fully upgraded, you're going to have a lot of damage resistance. The next card is Ironclad. You gain damage and energy resistance while not wearing power armor. Once again, fully upgraded, this card is going to give you a lot of damage resistance and it's going to be like you're wearing power armor. And the last card is Serendipity. While below 30% health, you gain a chance to avoid damage. Once this card is fully upgraded, you have a 45% chance to avoid the damage. It's a very nice card and I would highly recommend it. It's going to go a long way for your build and you are basically going to become unkillable. And when it comes to the rest of your perks, you just want to build into your actual build. If you're running a commando build, build into your commando perks. If you're running a melee build, build into your melee perks. And when it comes to your mutations, you don't need to do anything special. Just use the mutations that you usually would. But if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you, and goodbye!